Look again at verse 6. <clears throat> Let me just read it to you again. Verse 6. It says, Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all their persons, and all the persons of his household, his cattle, and all his animals, and all his goods, which he had gained in the land of Canaan. And he went to a country away from the presence of his brother Jacob. He's going away from the promised land. All of the blessings are in the promised land. He's departing from it. For their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. And the land where they were strangers could not support them because of their livestock. Much like Abraham and Lot went their separate ways. And so Esau dwelt in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Now, first of all, Esau here recognized that the patriarchal blessing belonged to Jacob and that part of that blessing included the land of Canaan. And so while Jacob was away in Haran, remember how Jacob goes to Haran for 20 years? While Jacob was away in Haran, before Jacob returned back to the land of Canaan, Esau, knowing that the land belongs to Jacob, Esau left the land of Canaan to go and find his own land. And verse 9 tells us that he settled in Mount Seir in the land that became Edom. Now the land of Edom is southeast of the Dead Sea. And the name Edom, it means red. <laughs> the name Edom means red. And the name was first given to Esau back in Genesis chapter 25 verse 30. His descendants were called the Edomites. And the land that they occupied was called Edom. Red. They called the land red. The land was called Edom because the soil in that region. Guess what color it is? It's red. Real original, yeah, you know, just real, real original words and names they came up with. Well, it's red. Why don't we call it red? Let's call it Edom. I have a couple of pictures for you. If you want to bring up the first picture, this is in Edom. And this, uh, like a couple years ago, our church took a trip to uh, modern day Jordan. And if you look, you can see that's one of my sons walking there on that sand dune. You can pull up the next picture. That's Edom. Now you see why they called it red. This is, a, uh, this is a place called Wadi Rum. And this was used in uh, the movie The Martian a couple years ago with Matt Damon. It's been used in a Star Wars movie as one of the Star Wars planets. Uh, because look at it. It's red. So that's, that's why they called it red. Again, God focuses on Esau's family and the Edomites in this chapter because of their role in Israel's history throughout the Bible. They, they, they're the, they are a perpetual enemy to the children of Israel. Now, here's the thing. Give me your attention. In the Bible, in the Bible, Esau and the Edomites are a type of the flesh and of the sin nature. They are a picture of of the sin nature. Just as Edom was a perpetual enemy to Israel, so too your flesh is the enemy of the Spirit. And your flesh always opposes the work of the Spirit in your life. And just as Edom keeps popping up and causing trouble, Throughout Israel's history, your flesh keeps popping up and causing trouble in your life, right? If not, if you have no struggle with your flesh, I'd like to talk to you after the service <laughs> and maybe touch the hem of your garment because my shoulder has been hurting me lately. If you'll turn with me over to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Verse 16. 
Galatians 5.16. I love hearing the pages of Bibles turning. It's music to the ears of a pastor to hear that. Verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk in the spirit, you will not give in to the flesh or give in to the desires of your sin nature. Verse 17, we're told for the flesh, your sin nature, lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to. To one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. The flesh and the spirit, they're at odds with each other. They're entrenched against each other. And your flesh, your sin nature, tries to prevent you from doing what the spirit wants you to do. The flesh opposes the work of the spirit in your life. Your flesh is against you doing what God wants you to do. And we see this illustrated in the relationship between Edom and Israel. Where Edom is like our flesh and Israel is like the spirit. And Edom is always trying to prevent Israel and always coming against Israel and opposing them. 